Boom, splash. Hey guys, Noxo here. I uh, wanted to do another quick video with you uh, to explain a couple things. We just came off a strike on uh, Hama Airfield, took out a, a headquarters building on the airfield, and uh, we're now off target. Headed home, but we still got ordnance, and uh, we're trolling for some targets, hopefully uh, uh, going to go kill some more stuff. So what I wanted to talk about today was uh, how to uh, do some uh, target of opportunity with the air-to-ground radar. Uh, and I'm also going to kill two birds with one stone and talk about some elevation errors and how that affects pointing when you designate from the radar to the target pod uh, using the target of opportunity uh, and some of the pitfalls. So let me throw it on, on pause and uh, I'll set the scenario up for you. So like I said, we just came off a strike. Uh, we're going to go trolling for some targets. And uh, either you, uh, you can look on the F-10 map and uh, look at an area that you think that you might find some targets or you might get a, a tasking by a JTAC with some coordinates to go look at, and uh, you're going to use the air-to-ground radar to, to, to find some stuff. So in this scenario, what we're going to do is we'll create our own target. Uh, so we're off target. Uh, steer 3 is our egress point. Steer 4 is uh, continue up to um, Interlake Air Base uh, up to the north. But we've got reports that somewhere, excuse me, in this valley, uh, right at the, the uh, mountain pass right in here, is uh, is a column of T-72s that we're going to go look for. Don't really know exactly where it is, uh, but we've got some rough coordinates uh, that the JTAC is going to give us. So uh, first of all, I want to do a little bit of target study. So obviously you're looking for that mountain pass uh, for the terrain on both sides with the opening to the east. Notice you've got a, a power line that's coming in uh, into the um, pass, and then you've got a road system where there's a T-intersection at a town that we're going to start looking at. Uh, again, we don't know where these uh, tanks are, but we're going to use the air to ground radar to hopefully find them. So I'm just going to throw a point down somewhere in this area since we've narrowed it down. And again, they could be anywhere in here, so we're going to take our time with the map. So let's say uh, we're going to do a rough coordinates of, uh, you can see up in the corner, uh, I'll put the cor uh, cursor somewhere here in the middle. So let's do 3506 and 3619 is just a rough coordinate. Actually, let me, uh, let me jump over to the... Um, uh, decimal lat long, so uh, 3506, 3619, and let's call it just a rough altitude of about 2,100 feet. The elevation is really important to be able to cue the radar in, uh, so we'll go from there. So we'll uh, we'll jump into the um, into the jet, and we'll start typing those coordinates in. So again, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can either uh, turn the near steer point uh, into a um, into a target. What I prefer to do is I just like to create my own new target uh, that is completely disassociated from the route, usually at the end of the route somewhere. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go into the steer point submenu. I'm going to create target 69 point, of course, and because I know that's uh, at the long end of the route, so I'll go ahead and type in those coordinates. So we'll go shift north 3506, boom. And again, these aren't super precise, and then we'll go east. 0, 36, 19, 19, boom. And then, again, don't forget the elevation. That's really critical. We'll put 2,100 in there because, again, that was a rough coordinate I pulled off of the F-10 map. And now the beauty is now I have something to cue my radar to that we can then start looking for the, uh, for the, the tanks. Uh, and, again, reports are that it's a column of tanks on a road somewhere in that mountain pass uh, in the vicinity of the of a uh, couple of those towns. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go uh, to the air ground map. I'll get that all set up. Again, I'm on freeze. And what I'd like to do is now, my suggestion is always type in the, the target point that you want to queue. Notice it's going to queue up to the top of the screen and it's going to latch until it comes in view. Now I want to cycle over to map target point. And I've got, uh, I'm going to zoom out to 3-3. Three, three. That's usually a good starting point. If you really want to scan a wider area, 4-7 size is good. I usually don't go any bigger than that because you're not going to see much other than really big towns in a 4-7. In a, uh, Again, I want to have a reasonable chance of seeing the armor in at least the 3-3 three, three before I zoom into a, a really small area. Notice I've got the target pot up on the, on the right. I don't usually run this way. I'm just doing this for the video illustration purposes. Normally, I keep it under the uh, radar map. So when I do find something and I designate, and I can just flick to the to the um, target pod, but I'm going to do this on purpose so I can show the relationship between the, uh, the the map and the target pod when we get into the elevation discussion. All right, so what I'm going to do is, and I'm also going to go ahead and steer to 69, so I have some 
uh, information on where it is. So it's 27 miles away. It's off to the left. So let's go ahead and start bringing that onto the radar. I got a master caution light because I didn't turn the autopilot off. That's okay. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn until this radar screen, little radar window pops uh, into the field of view. And then I'll stop with it somewhere about 30 to 45 degrees uh, off to the side. Boom, there it is. It's already latched. And that's the beauty of typing it into the, into the uh, point up here is that way it, it will automatically jump to the target once it comes within the field of view. So again, I'm trying to talk and fly at the same time. Let me go ahead and get in on autopilot. That's fine. So we can uh, talk and map. So let's go ahead and take the first map. We'll let it cook. And again, a lot of good things happen when you, when you make it a target point. So I'm going to go ahead and freeze this. One of the first things I do is I go ahead and I'll put it on pause. I'll go ahead over to ML2 so I get a little bit better map. I don't get these lines as much uh, when I take the next map. So again, before I zoom in, let's, let's go back to our target study. So you can see a gap in the terrain. There's my shadowing. Uh, there is my power line. You can see that power line coming through there. So I know that I'm kind of in the good area of where that of where the coordinate is. But I can't see much yet, so let's go ahead and zoom in. And I'll take a 1-3. A, a and again, patience is the key here. And we're still 23 miles out, so we've got time. I will go ahead and zoom in on that. Taking a 1.3 map. We'll go ahead and take us off pause so we can kind of fly real time as we uh, go in. Again, because I froze it before, it will come up frozen. I'll put it on pause again. So again, now you can see I've got uh, some good target study. Um, so right here looks like this is probably that first town right at the gap. There's my bend in the power line. So I'm probably thinking it's somewhere in this area. So now what I want to do is I want to kind of bracket that, that town uh, and, the, uh, and the pass so I can get a little bit better view here. So let's go ahead and take our next map. Again, we're still 21 miles out. Again, I had it on um, uh, pause for a little bit. So now let's go ahead and do some good target study. So there's a couple interesting things in there. Uh, I've got the road. Uh, I've got uh, some little dots here that may be some vehicles. Uh, I've got my town here. Uh, I've got some really, really distinct dots on a road here that may be another candidate. Um, so again, it's one of those things that I can now use the radar to look around not seeing much else, but those are my two kind of um, areas of interest that uh, that I could take a look at. So let's take a look at the first one, uh, and we'll uh, we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and take command of the pod. Looks like we've got some weather, so let's go ahead and run in and get a little bit closer. And again, remember we're still 15 miles out, so we may be getting some weather. Uh, yep, we definitely are in some clouds. Get up and out of these guys. All right, that's clearing up a little bit better now. So let's uh, let's go back to that first set. Let's clear the designation out, and uh, we will take a look at these bad guys. Target, and now we're going to take command of the pod. We'll zoom in and, and uh, start looking around. I don't like to go right into the narrowest field of view. Uh, I want something that's usable that I can make stuff out, but uh, I can start looking at stuff. And again, if I see something interesting, I can always zoom in uh, on those guys. So zooming in up there. Yeah, I don't really see anything on any of these roads that looks interesting. I can zoom in a little bit. And nope, I don't really see anything. All right, so now let's go ahead and go to the other set. So let's go, um, we'll clear that designation out. We'll go ahead and take command of the radar over to these guys. This is probably my most likely uh, location for the tanks. So we'll designate. I noticed the pod didn't jump because I was still in area track. So let me take command of the pod again. I'll uh, break the track. I'll go to snowplow. Not really required to go to snowplow. And I will go ahead and do the designation again. So let's zoom in on this one this time. command and boom it looks like I definitely have some vehicles on the road right chia so yeah so notice we were able to use the radar to uh, to look around at some different uh, likely areas 
But again, we used a target point to kind of cue us in to an area rather than just trying to map a, a random area and having no idea what we're looking at. So now what I want to do is, so we're pretty confident that these are our tanks. I'm going to go ahead and start flying in. And what we want to do is we want to get within, again, DCS is we want to get within 8.1 8 miles or so to, uh, to get the laser on and we'll designate and, uh, and go ahead and attack these guys. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, some problems uh, that also has come up with guys saying, hey, my, I do a designation off of the radar map, but my, my queue is nowhere in the vicinity, and I'll show you why. So let's go ahead and pause there. Laser comes on. Notice I'm getting good laser ranging. And let's go ahead and designate on one of these tanks. That looks really good. And yeah, there's a current little bug where it jumps. That wasn't so bad there. I'll go ahead and get a track mode on. I prefer area track. I'm not a big fan of point track. Uh, but we'll go ahead and designate. So now you can see the, the diamond. If I were to zoom way in, you zoom way in on that, you can see that diamond is probably pretty darn close uh, on, the, uh, on that spot. So let's zoom back out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some, uh, some things that can go wrong. So what if I forgot, what if I just said, hey, I'm not going to do target 69 point. I, I didn't create that. I'm just going to uh, queue over or I forget to sequence it over. And let's say I was still steering to steer point three and I had three in PB17, even though 69 is on the, uh, on the map. Let's take control of the target point again. And now what I want to do is I want to show you how far off. Let's put in snowplow again, just so when we queue, you can see the difference. Let's go ahead and designate, but now I've got a normal steer point in here rather than a target point. I want you, I want you to see what happens. So we're going to designate. And then notice instead of 69 point, it says SP, which means it's a target of opportunity. And now notice how far that queues away. So uh, can you guys remember where the... Uh, where the tanks were in this picture before. I think they were up here, uh, up by that town. So let's go ahead, take command, and let's say I queued and I'm going, hey, I have no idea where this guy is. I don't see any tanks. Crap, there's return to queue. Zoom out, I don't see anything. Crap, where's my tanks? So this is the pitfall of having the, the wrong point in there, and I'll show you why that's the case. So let's, I believe the tanks are up here, if I remember right. So zoom in. Yep, there they are. So you can see they the pod queued a really long way away from the point. And the reason why is, if you remember, 69 point is 2,100 feet, and that was probably pretty accurate. But if I type in 3 point, or 3, I'm sorry, look at the elevation. That's almost 1,500 feet off from the uh, from what the actual elevation is out here in the, uh, in, the in the pod. So that elevation delta accounts for why the pod is so far off. Remember, the, a designation is a three-dimensional thing. It's not just lat long. It also includes the elevation. So if the pod doesn't know where to point and all it knows is where the elevation is, it's going to use the elevation of three-point uh, in, in, uh, in, its, in its memory. So same thing. Let's put in four, and I'll show you the elevation difference the other way because... Four, steer four is much higher than the elevation. It's almost 2,000. It's actually right at about 2,000 feet higher than the, the point that we're going to map. So let's go ahead and designate with, with four in PB17. And now you're going to see how the, the pod cues much differently. So I've got it snow plowed right now just so we can see it. Let's do the same thing. We'll go ahead and designate on that, but with four, steer four, and now notice it's way long. Uh, we are now looking up in the mountains because the elevation is, is much higher than the, than the actual target. And I think the, notice this is my gap right here. And I think the, the tanks are probably down in here. But again, and let's go ahead and take the pot and we'll take a look and see. Uh, yep, there's my tanks. But if I re queue return to queue, it's way out there. It's almost out of the field of view and you'd have a, fair of a time trying to find uh, anything with that elevation being so far off. So you can see that's a huge pitfall. If I'm not using a point that's relatively close to where I think my targets are, especially in elevation, 
uh, it's going to make it really difficult for me to find something. And it's not a bug if the target pod cues way off if the elevation is different. So this is a really important thing that you need to uh, keep in mind when you're doing targets of opportunity. Again, what I recommend is uh, create a point where uh, at least roughly in the vicinity of the area that you're going to look at uh, with at least a rough uh, elevation. And if the elevation's, you know, a couple hundred feet off at the most, uh, 50 feet off or whatever, you're going to probably find that uh, point in the target field of view. But if you start getting much beyond that, then it's going to make it really difficult to try to find what you're looking for. So the final thing I want to talk about for targets of opportunity is uh, is kind of an overall game plan if you're trying to look at a wide area. So again, this is a technique only. This is a recommendation. You don't have to do it. But again, let's just take a, I don't know, let's take a, an area. Let's say that you wanted to map uh, around uh, this town, for instance. This is a Good example. So what I would recommend, just go to the F10 map. Uh, let's say it, let's say reports are that I've got armor uh, somewhere around this whole vicinity. What I would do is I would just throw in, you know, three, four, five points at, at random intervals. You know, put in 69 point here, 70 point here, 71 point, 72 point, 73 point, and so on. Uh, and if you really wanted to plan it, you could have them close enough where they're uh, uh, overlapping within that um, three to five mile range. But that way it gives you areas that you can queue in the, the map rather than just trying to randomly map uh, in an area. Uh, so again, that would be the recommendation I would do is I would start throwing some target points. And again, target point is the key uh, at some random areas. Uh, so you can then um, start queuing the map up and doing more of a methodical search to, uh, to find your stuff. All right, that's it for me. Uh, not so is uh, about out. I wanted to uh, I wanted to show you the latest livery uh, that uh, Coffee did for me. So pretty cool. Rocket Jet tail one sixteen ninety was actually the tail that I flew uh, in real life when I was in the rockets, and uh, pretty cool livery. So um, I'm uh, I'm loving it. Even not so out. I will uh, do another video soon on some other stuff. Take care, guys. Say bye.